Hey everybody, Randy Writings here with the Quad Jack. Today I will be talking about the early design and modeling of this craft. I had long thought about building a human-powered amphibious vehicle, but didn't think it was possible with an existing kayak. That is, until I pulled out all the hardware of my 12-foot Victory kayak to fiberglass a hole in the bottom. I saw that the cockpit had more room in it than I had originally imagined and realized if I could move the seat all the way to the back, possibly notching small cutouts for the seat back and also for where my feet would need to pedal and place the drive and the steering mechanisms to the front and rear of the cockpit, then it was possible to use this boat. To make sure, I went to my local hardware store and bought a lot of small diameter PVC and began modeling a full-size mock-up inside the boat. The idea in my head and what we first arrived at in reality were remarkably close. I wanted front wheel drive and rear wheel steering both on land and water. This reduces complexity by only having a single mechanism for each. You can build amphibians other ways, such as utilizing wheels on land and a propeller in the water, switching between the two, but I wanted to keep this as simple as I could. I also toyed with the idea of a rear wheel drive, but rejected it for the reason that transferring my pedal power from well in front of me in a recumbent position to well behind me to drive the boat would add a lot of complexity and weight. Anyway, back to the full-size mock-up model. I started by placing the front axle, main component of the mechanism, in a place where it would be significantly above the water line and at a height that would allow me to buy off-the-shelf bike wheels and still have sufficient ground clearance while on land. Here you see another early rejected idea. Initially, I envisioned not pedaling like a bike but rather using a push bar system that would then articulate and drive a sprocket similar to the way railroad wheels work. That sprocket would have a chain that would turn the axle. I still like the idea of this drive. The advantage is that your feet and legs stay low in the boat all the time, which lowers your center of gravity in water. Pedaling raises your feet and legs considerably which can cause instability while afloat. In the end though, I opted for simplicity again and went with a traditional bicycle chain drive. Here, see the actual drive. Essentially, the bottom bracket of a steel frame 10-speed bike and some of the support struts cut out and flipped upside down. You can also see where the axles would approximately exit the boat and coroplast plastic cutouts depicting wheels. You can also see PVC depicting where later the frame and seat would be and how that would attach to the drive mechanism. One added advantage of modeling with this PVC pipe was later it was very easy to take realistic measurements and have the one inch steel bar that we use for the frame cut to length without undue waste and scrap. I plan to do an entire video later just on how and where I sourced my materials. Here's a view towards the rear, better showing the seat. You'll notice the wheels are flat on the bottom. That was artistic license because in reality the boat would be three to four inches off the ground, but it is shown sitting on the floor of my shop. I flattened the plastic wheels of the model to compensate for that distance. You can also see in this image that the pedals will strike the gunnels of the boat unless there are notches cut out, as I mentioned earlier. Here is the completed full-size mock-up model showing the back of the frame and the rear steering mechanism. The rear wheel isn't shown complete, again, just artistic license. The rear steering mechanism will essentially be the front forks of a bicycle cut off and turned backwards. Early on, I realized that the more parts that I could find in a bike store or automotive or hardware store, 
the easier it would be to repair if I wanted to truly use this in extended long distance rides. It was at this point in the process that I invited my father over to take a look. He is a retired engineer and had been skeptical about this idea since I mentioned it to him. As I don't know how to weld and don't really have an adequate shop, I was going to need to get his help if I could. I had shown him a crude sketch of the idea and explained it to him, but he was still unsure about it. He came over and walked around it twice and then asked me, where is the differential? To which I remember making a sound like, huh? Well, he explained, if you're going to drive both wheels, you need a differential so the wheels don't bind up in a turn. This was something I had not considered. If you solve that, he said, I think we can build this. I went online and soon found that most three-wheel bikes, or adult trikes as they're called, only drive one wheel. The clever riders who live in areas with loose gravel or snow and ice solved this problem a while back with something I like to call a faux differential, which you can see here between the two disc brakes. You split the axle, put a normal sprocket with a freewheeling ratchet on one side, and then a single freewheeling sprocket, like from a BMX bike, on the other, and bridge across the two with shoulder bolts. It's not a true differential, but it does allow both wheels to rotate independently while driving both sides simultaneously. I took a photo of one of these faux differentials to my dad the next day, and he essentially said, oh yeah, I can build that, and we were off. I'll go into more detail on this part and the rest of the build in other videos. Since this video is about the early design and modeling of the quad yak, I will include some things that really didn't come to much, but should be good for some comic relief. One of the things I did was build a waterproof wooden box to test the force of various paddle wheel designs. You've probably heard of inventors spinning their wheels, but I don't think very many of them have taken it quite as literally as I have. went so far as to attempt a full-size force meter built out of a mountain bike with a suspended rear axle and a kiddie pool. Notice the string coming off the seat post right over the rear wheel. It goes to a fish scale so as I pedal and the paddle wheels force me forward I can gauge how many pounds of force I am generating. Somewhere there's a companion video I did in which I do a similar test with the fish scale tied to a tree and my kayak as I paddle. I was trying to get a baseline on how much force I generated just kayaking normally to compare to the paddle wheels. While I was amusing myself playing in kiddie pools, concurrently we began working on the craft itself. More videos on that process will follow soon. I'm Randy Ridings, and this is the Quad Yak.